Hi folks, I'm Dave Barnhart, pastor of St. Junia United Methodist Church. St. Junia is a new church in Birmingham, Alabama, and we meet on Sundays at 4.30 p.m. at Sidebar Cafe on 7th Avenue. We'd love for you to join us sometime. Our vision is to become a diverse community of sinners, saints, and skeptics who join God in the renewal of all things. We think sinners, saints, and skeptics describes just about everybody. So whoever you are, whatever your background, we'd love to have you join us. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed today's worship service.
Church. Our vision at St. Junia is to become a diverse community of sinners, saints, and skeptics who join God in the renewal of all things. Today, uh, this is a special worship service. We're going wall-to-wall -wall special music. A lot of this is original music, stuff that we've written or stuff that we've rewritten and re recomposed. Uh, I want to thank Stephen and, uh, <clears throat> and Ashley and the rest of the amazing band for doing some... Uh, yeah, absolutely. And today is Stephen's birthday, and, and uh, which is awesome. Stephen is one of those guys, when it's his birthday, he makes a party for everybody else. So a lot of this stuff out on the bar he made, it's going to be awesome. And so we're grateful, for, grateful to him for making all that. So we're going to share in music and food and fellowship today. This is, uh, it's a celebration. It's what worship is supposed to be, a joyful giving, of, giving glory to God. So I'm grateful that you all are here, especially welcome to all of you who are guests. Uh, and as I said, it's cozy. I think I didn't sell these seats over here too well because I still see a lot of people standing up. And there are seats over here if you get tired of standing up. So up here, there's like four here and there's like probably eight or nine or ten over there. So uh, it's really not that bad, I promise. So. I'll, point, I'll point down the middle. Right, right. <laughs> so do feel free to make yourself uh, at home. This is a, we're casual here. Uh, if you want to, if you need to wander around, get some coffee, get some food, that's all fine. We're, we take it, to the, we're pretty casual about things. Before we begin worship today, may we pray together. God of us all, who called us into being with your musical voice, who calls our hearts to beat along to the rhythm of your grace, we thank you for calling us into being and calling us here today. As we sing your praises, as we hear your word read and proclaimed, as we pray together, draw us closer to God and closer to each other and form us spiritually into your disciples. We give you thanks for your grace among us. Walk among us, touch our hearts, heal us, make us more fully yours. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, who will be a witness for my Lord? Oh, who will be a witness for my Lord? 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 Who will
witness for my Lord. Oh, be a witness for my Lord. I will be a witness for my Lord. There was a man of the Pharisees. His name was Nicodemus, and he didn't believe. The same came to Christ by night. Wanted to be tired of human sight. Nicodemus was a man who desired to know how a man can be born his own. Christ told me as a friend Samson said, cut off of my head. Cut it off, cut it off. As clean as your head. bringing in all kinds of singers. Let's stand and have everybody sing. This is our church theme song, actually. If you have not been to St. Junia before, we like to do original music. We write a lot of music every week, Steve and Dave and myself. And uh, we also do some mashups. This one kind of falls more into the mashup category. So you'll probably recognize it's, it's a mashup of Bob Marley's One Love and a traditional Methodist hymn, Church Has One Foundation. Break us apart. 
singing. We're going to keep it going with another one that we arranged out of the hymnal with new words by Dave. This is Let's Sing Unto the Lord. St. Junia, and we are going to have three parts um, going here, um, and I'm going to teach them to you. So maybe I can have kind of this section over here be part one. You guys in the middle, you be part two. People over here, be three. Now, if you don't like the part that I just gave you, it's okay. You can sing whatever part you want. I'm not going to come get you if you change parts, but I will teach them all to you. Here's the first one. He has done marvelous. He has done So you can listen for his voice. Here's the second one. Marvelous, 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 marvelous things. Praise the Lord. Marvelous, 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 marvelous things. Praise the Lord. That's the second part. Michael, back here on drums, is going to jam out on that one. So if you need to listen out for that part, he's on this one. Here's the third one. He has done marvelous things. He has done marvelous things. 
the choir. Yeah. You may be seated if you have a place to sit. Uh, so again, uh, let me say welcome. Uh, one of the things that we do when we gather together is we also lift to God our prayers, our concerns, both our personal concerns and the concerns of the world. So I'm going to begin us uh, in prayer, and I'm going to give you an opportunity. If there's a name or a situation that you would like to lift up, just feel free to say it loudly, and we will all respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Just a name or a sentence. We don't need a complete medical report. So uh, may we go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your love for us. We know as we come to worship you that we come from a broken world, a world that desperately needs your touch and your healing. We are conscious of places where there is ongoing conflict, where there is war and strife, natural disasters where people are struggling with famine and strangling poverty. God, we ask you to be present in those situations and where possible help us to be agents of your grace, to advocate for the least of these, for those who need justice, for those who need help. But we also recognize, Lord, that we are complicit in many of those same systems. Systems of racism and sexism, system, systems that keep people in poverty. Gracious God, we ask for you to bring justice and healing to our own communities, to Birmingham, and to our own personal situations, because we all know in our hearts what we're struggling with, and we know family members and friends who are struggling with addiction or other, other illnesses. And so we lift to you ourselves and our communities, and I invite you to share at this time situations that are close to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. God, for all these that we've shared and all those that remain close to us unspoken, we give you thanks that you hear our, our prayers and you answer. And we give you thanks that when we don't know what to pray, that your prayer, that your Holy Spirit intercedes for, for us with prayers that are deeper than words. You hear the cry of our hearts, inarticulate as they may be. You know what we want and need. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we, see, and we pray to you the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So for thousands of years after Christians would pray and feel the peace of the passes understanding upon them, they would pass that peace to other people. Now the way you can do this, you can say, peace be with you, and the response is, and also with you. Or you can say, hey, how's it going? Whatever you're comfortable doing. We are tight, so don't wander all the way around because it'll be, it'll be like bumper cars. But if you would stand and pass the peace to those who are around you.
be with you. And also with you. You can also say also with y'all, which is just as perfectly acceptable. Uh, so as I said, we're, we're playing a lot of original songs. We're debuting some original songs today as well. And uh, I like, I'm not actually preaching, but because I can't get away with not talking, I've got to do a little something, right? So I'm going to introduce some of the songs that we've written because uh, to me, I think they express part of what we're doing with St. Junia which is that we're reclaiming parts of the Bible that many people don't know exist. And we are putting them to music, and we are, we are advocating a different approach to doing theology. My hope is that some of the songs that we've written will percolate and connect with other churches, and that more people will sing them and think about their faith and think about the Bible and think about their religious practice in a different way, in a way that maybe they hadn't thought of before. So the next song you're about to hear is called Desperate. It tells two stories. It tells the story of the bleeding woman in Mark chapter 5, and the story of, we often call him, doubt his own family, and he praises her faith. And that's a different picture than a lot of us have of what faith means, which is to sit quietly and just patiently trust. She actively goes and gets what she needs to survive. Now Thomas is another case. He refuses to believe in the resurrection until he can actually touch Jesus' wounds. But Jesus does not reject Thomas because of his doubt. He invites him to touch him, to put his hands in his wounds. Now, in both of these stories, the characters are desperate, one for healing, the other for proof. But the Bible doesn't tell them just to be patient or, quote, just have faith. They reach out for what they need. And because we talk about sinners, saints, and skeptics, for me, people who struggle with faith are a special passion of mine. I have to tell, I, I really always want to tell folks, your doubt is not a liability. It is an asset. And what Jesus invites people to do is actually put their hands in his wounds to identify with the pain and suffering of the world, and that's how you come to know faith. So one of the themes we talk about is that we do not believe our way into acting, we act our way into believing. John Wesley said, preach faith until you have it, and when you have it, you will preach faith. Christianity has often put way too much emphasis on believing the right things, on giving your intellectual assent to a set of doctrines. But what we see in the Bible is that faith is not just that. Sometimes it's all you have when all your other options run out. So we talk as if belief is the opposite of doubt or faith is the opposite of being skeptical, but in fact, a lot of the Bible is written because of this struggle. In fact, God gives the name to Jacob, Israel, struggle with God. And that's what our faith is about. So this song is called Desperate. Uh, just sit back and enjoy it. If you feel like you're inclined to sing along with the choruses, you're welcome to do that. Let's 
tune that we wrote not too long ago. I guess really it's really more Steve's than it is mine. I helped a little bit, but it's called Connected. Oh, oh, oh. 
so far. It's called Nothing Can Stop God's Love. Yeah, sing along if you know it. I know some of you probably do. to hear has some shocking and offensive language in it because the Bible has some shocking and offensive language in it. A lot of people don't realize this. They read the Bible, they kind of skip over parts, and a lot of, there's a lot of stories they don't actually know. I need to give you some background. 
because the next song refers to two Bible stories which don't get preached from the prof pulpit properly, in my opinion. <clears throat> the first, yeah, yeah, psh, water. So the story, the first one is called The Story of Judah and Tamar. It's found in Genesis chapter 38. Uh, and I'm just going to give you the real quick thumbnail version of this story. Judah has three sons. The oldest marries Tamar, but he dies before he, they can have children. Now back in the day, in Bible times, we hear talk, people talk about biblical marriage. Biblical marriage was not between one man and one woman. It was between two families. And the goal was to produce offspring so that they could inherit land that was promised to Abraham by God. Right? God made a promise to Abraham, you'll have land and descendants. So if you didn't have descendants, you were cut off from the promise of God. So what happened if two, in, within two families, if a husband died before they could produce children, the wife would sort of have a temporary marriage with the, brothers, with the, husband's, the dead husband's brother. Does that make sense? No, of course not, because we from a totally different mindset, right? So their goal is she has to get pregnant and produce an heir because that is her social security. When she gets old, she has to have a child to inherit her dead husband's property so he can take care of her. Does that make sense? No. No, okay, well, thank you. Good. So that's the, that's the mindset that we're dealing with. So this is the Bible story. This is the culture she's in. So she marries Onan, who enjoys the conjugal part of their relationship, but takes steps to prevent her from getting pregnant, so God smites him dead. Naughty, naughty. So, but his sin was not some sexual sin. His sin was theft. He was stealing her security. So what happens next is Judah, the father-in-law, says, well, I'm sorry, I've, my other son's a little too young. Go stay with your parents. So she goes and stays with her parents. Years pass. Nothing happens. She finds out he's going to, on a business trip to another town. She goes to the town, dresses like a prostitute, seduces him. Yeah, I know, this is like daytime reality TV or something, right? So seduces him, but she's smart. So before, so before they depart, she says, I'll need collateral since you haven't given me payment. I'll take your staff and your seal. His staff is the symbol of his manhood. His seal is the symbol of his authority. Does anyone have any questions that this is a feminist parable? She takes his manhood and his authority, right? So they go back home. He finds out she's pregnant and he's furious and he calls her out to be executed, because you could do that back in the day. So as they're dragging her out, this is like the scarlet letter or something, right? She produces the staff and the seal, and she says, the man who got me pregnant owned these. Tell me whose they are. Judah looks at them, and he goes, oops. <laughs> and he says, she is more righteous than me. It's a great story. It makes three big points. The story does three things. First, it points out the double standards we have between men's and women's sexual ethics and how women are at a disadvantage. It does this, right? Genesis chapter 38. If you don't believe me, go read it. All right, number two, it makes a hero, again, out of a woman who takes initiative to secure her own future. She's the hero of the story. And number three, it highlights the fact that religious people who accuse others of sin are often guilty of the same sins. So this is a powerful feminist parable. Is there any question why it doesn't get preached in more pulpits? <laughs> I'm dead serious. So I said it was time that this song, this story, needs to be imprinted in our culture. This is a story for our times. More Christians need to know this story. It would change the way we do our faith if more Christians knew this story. So yes, there's some shocking and offensive language in it because there's supposed to be. It's in the Bible. So that's the first story. The second story is more familiar. You've probably heard it. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. Again, there's a slightly different take on it than go help those people in need. It's a, it's a reminder that the people who help people in need are often not from my religious group or my ethnic tribe. Oftentimes, there are other people who are doing the will of God. Again, both of these stories, if more Christians knew them and knew this interpretation, would change the way Christianity is perceived in our culture. It would change the way Christians behave. So... I know that's a lot to put on a song, <laughs> but I'm hopeful you will enjoy it and that you will share it with other people.
our place and this is what we sing when we look in his face song this is our first time to perform it anywhere and actually I just learned it right before this so <laughs> it's new to me too it's called grace will conquer in case you're wondering about the process Dave emails me about uh, 50 songs <laughs> and then I turn through them and, and write a lot of music to them so he usually writes me hey do this one like uh, like the Beatles mid 60s and we go with it <laughs> all right this is grace will conquer Oh, I'm 
All right. This next one is another original. This is a fun one, a little bit more happy than some of the ones we've been doing. This is the Beatitudes. Y'all can sing along if you know it. Some of you might. He said, Happy are the homeless. Cause the kingdom will be theirs. He said, Happy are the sad ones. Cause God will dry up all their tears. I'm gonna hear it, Stephen. He said, Happy. Methodist Church, we celebrate two sacraments. One is baptism and the other one is communion. And we get to celebrate both of them today. So I'm going to invite Summer and her family forward first because uh, Summer comes to us to be baptized this morning. It's a time of joy in the church where we celebrate uh, someone becoming, oftentimes churches use the word member, a member of the body of Christ, but at St. Junior we really like to use the word partner because we are all partners in ministry. And uh, so I want to welcome uh, Dennis and Summer Donnelly forward. And you all have a role in this too. There's going to be a couple of prayers up, up on the screen for you to uh, say if you can see them. If not, you can say watermelon. That's okay. God will interpret the uh, prayers of your heart. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Summer Donnelly comes to us today to be baptized. So Summer, I have some questions for you. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, would you answer, I do. And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, would you answer, I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, 
and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, would you answer, I do. Now, this question is for you as Christ's church. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, would you answer, we do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this family now before you in your care? And if you would, say the prayer that's up on the screen. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Summer with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way to lead to life. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed in the, but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. And when you saw your people in, as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb, He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and the one who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. And if you would kneel here. And family, if you would like to lay your hands on her her shoulders and if the rest of you if you want to just extend your hands towards summer and we're going to all collectively baptize her and pray for her summer I baptize you in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy Spirit and may the Holy Spirit work within you that you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ amen This is a time for you to applaud. So this is Summer Donnelly, her husband Dennis, and their children, uh, you don't have a name tag, so you're going to have to remind me. Isla, Isla Stella, Stella and, Max. and Max. So uh, we're going, they're going to welcome them also as partners of St. Junia. So will you be loyal to this church and support it with your prayers, your gifts, your service? Prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. If so, would you say, say it? We will. And if you would, also, there's another prayer for you up on the screen. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As partners together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant to participate in the ministries of this church through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And if you would, let's just pray for them. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you add to our number, that we are agents of grace together with them, and that we are all members of your body. We thank you for all the gifts you give them, and we pray that we will be found faithful as they will be found faithful in our service to you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Would you welcome them? I love doing baptisms. That's so cool. We also share in the sacrament of communion. Uh, We remember what Jesus has done for us, what Jesus continues to do for us. Uh, And I want to share with everyone, this is not a Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. It's open for anyone who would like to partake. We remember the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, and he took bread, he broke it, he blessed it, He gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, each of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. Pardon me. in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory 
and we feast at this heavenly banquet. Enjoy the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. If you'd stand just over there. Let's move the mirror. As I said, this is not a Methodist table. This is the Lord's table. It's available for anyone who would like to partake. Uh, we give communion by intinction, which means I tear off a piece of bread and hand it to you, and then you dip it in the cup. And the way we'll do this is we will serve the musicians first, and then we're tight in here, so what we'll do is we'll serve this section. If you can kind of just come up and make your way around and then return to your seat, and the rest of you after this section is served, you can come down the center aisle, kind of make a path, and then return to your seat by the outside. And we're going to, I'm going to begin us in a song, which is just an a cappella chant, and it goes like this. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul.
our last song. Uh, I'm not going to list all the announcements. I thank you for staying a little longer. We went a little long today, but I think it's been awesome. So I appreciate your being here to support the music that we're doing and the unique ministry that we're trying to create. Uh, thank you for being part of it. There are some things going on in the life of the church that I want you to know about, though. It's on, if you look at the back of the bulletin, you'll see some, some upcoming events. Uh, this Friday, I'm going to be on a panel at the Birmingham Museum of Art. Um, it's an anti-racism panel, and so I encourage anyone who wants to come hear, the, hear about that to, to be present there. We have some small groups starting as well. And next week, we begin a series called Sermons for Skeptics. Now, this isn't just about me doing apologetics and telling you why you need to believe. I think it's important to listen really closely to skeptical questions, to use them to prize into the Bible and learn new things. And so if you know someone who's not a believer or not someone who is particularly into churchy stuff, I invite you to invite them. I invite you to invite them to be here for that. They'll have more great music and amazing preaching. So that's going to happen. Start next week. Runs for five weeks. Uh, I also want to thank you because it's your gifts that make this unique ministry possible. One of our goals in the next uh, several months is if we can make a studio recording of some of this stuff. Uh, I would really love to do that. Uh, I think this is this helps affect not only us here, but it has the potential to affect many other. Uh, churches and people who might take the stuff and play it and, and spread some of this wonderful theology uh, and uh, new ways of thinking about our faith. So uh, if you would like to help support that ministry, you can give in, in the offering. So at, as we close, there's an offering basket up here. Um, there's also, you can give online. If you look on the back of your bulletin, you can uh, give by going to, on, going to Realm and giving a excuse me, giving online, and we appreciate all the support. Thank you for your generosity. It enables us to do this kind of stuff. Uh, are there other announcements we need to bring before the community? Stick around. Stick yeah. around because there's lots of food and celebrate Stephen's birthday. I think there's a card somewhere to sign. Yes, too. and actually, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make God's face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up God's countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. St. Junia, you can do so by visiting stjunia.org. That's S A I N T J U N I A.org. And if you'd like to support us financially, I'd like to invite you to do that as well. Uh, you can do that at the link below. That's another way you can help join God in the renewal of all things and what God is doing through St. Junia United Methodist Church. Do feel free to join us anytime, 4 30 p.m., Sidebar Cafe in Birmingham, Alabama. Thanks. Have a great week. It was a pleasure, man.